as a child and finally thought as a child when I became a man I put away childish things no wonder it was a child because he spoke first and understood next before he thought as a man you think first understand next before you speak so what he says according to the scriptures he says as a man thinketh in his heart so is he so you are in your heart how you think and if your heart is out of whack your life will be out of whack because everything about your life is going to come from your heart and your heart's going to be based on how you think it's the same way naturally words determine the way you think the way you think determine the way you feel if you feel depressed you got to back up and find out what you're thinking about because thoughts of heaviness and depression determine how you feel so how a man thinks in his soul, how a man thinks in his mind determines how his life will work out. So the renewing of your mind will help you transform your life. And I'm talking about mind management. Question, do I want to transform my life? Do I want to change my life to a better quality of life? I need to have a knowledge but that knowledge can only be knowledge if it works for me. Let's look at 3rd John chapter 2. Let's begin there because I believe this is the basis of understanding where we're going. He says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. The Amplified says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way. Prosperity simply means being successful in every endeavor in life. That's God's will. Religion will tell you that God wants you to be successful in just spiritual things, but not over here in your natural life. The scriptures say it is with the mind that we serve the Lord. The mind is the battleground. The fight is in your mind. There is nothing as powerful as a changed mind. The question every day of your life needs to be, what are you thinking about and how long are you thinking about it? And how long you think about a thing is called focus. And whatever you focus on, you give strength to. So if you focus on your weaknesses, you focus on your sins, if you focus on the past failures, you strengthen those things to hinder you in your present day and in your future. So the scripture says that our whole life prosperity in every area begins with how we think. If God says to you that you can be transformed by the renewing of your mind, he's given you the responsibility. He's telling you that you can make it happen. He's instructing you to do it because he's put the ability within you to do it. So you can actually change your life from glory to glory by the renewing of your mind. And what you do to your mind will show up in its character. It will show up in what happens. If you don't manage your mind, then it's going to keep giving to you what it's already got. Where you are today is a function of your mind. You are the expression of all that's in your mind, the workings of your mind. That's who you are. Your personality is the expression of your mind. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Your perception has everything to do with your progression. If you do not perceive your situation correctly, it will not be better. Hence the awakening. The awakening deals with your perception. Father, I pray that the eyes of their understanding might be enlightened, that they might know, not hope, that they might know, that they might know, that they might know that you can stand flat-footed on what is the hope of your calling. I know who I am, not who I was, who I am. I know what he had in mind for my life. I know I will not die today. You know why you can't kill me today? I ain't finished. You see, you are called according to his purpose and not yours. 
All your life you've been talking to God about your purpose. And the reason he didn't move on it because it was your purpose. If you talk to God about his purpose, he will always move over his purpose. He did not call you according to your purpose. He called you according to his purpose. And if you dedicate yourself to his purpose, he will protect you. He will provide for you. He will process you. He will keep you. You, he will strengthen you because God always pays for what he orders. I'm going to say that again. God always pays for what he orders. You've been trying to get God to pay for your meal. God ain't paying for your meal. That's what you want. God said, if you do what I want, I will send the money. I will send the people. I will send the resources. I will send the help. It ain't about you. It's about me. You understand what I'm saying? Now, this is foundation. I have to break up the fallow ground in your mind so that you can begin to receive what the Word has to say. Mark chapter 7 and verse 13. Verse 13, let's read it out loud together. Making the Word of God of none effect through your tradition, which you have delivered, and many such like things do you. What did he say here? He says, your tradition will make the Word of God of no effect. Have you allowed your traditional way of thinking about prosperity to make the Word of God of no effect? Is that traditional way of thinking responsible for you not sitting here long enough to hear how this can be reconciled in grace? Your traditions make the Word of no effect. Now think with me. Wrong thinking equals wrong living. So if you think the wrong way about a thing, you're going to experience the wrong thing about that thing because you're thinking the wrong way about it. And religion as a whole has thought the wrong way about prosperity and the financial stewardship. What happens when I think the wrong way about something and I do it for a considerable amount of time? I create a traditional way of thinking. I think in a tradition and that tradition stops me from receiving what the Word really says. We can have a lot to do in determining what a year will bring forth for us. And it is true. We may not determine the exact activities or the actions or reactions of other people, but we sure enough can determine the final results. Would I be all right if I tell you that Jesus came so we can have abundant life? A marriage where you're getting beat up every day is not abundant life. A body that's infected with sickness and disease is not an abundant life. Not having enough to pay your bills is not an abundant life. Walking in fear that you're two paychecks away from being homeless is not an abundant life. And can't sleep at night because you're wondering if you're going to be able to keep your house is not an abundant life. The Bible says it is with the mind that we serve the Lord. The mind is the battleground. It is the place where the greatest conflict is. The struggle is in your mind. This is why we have people who go to bed tired and wake up tired. Slept eight hours and you wake up still tired. The reason you wake up tired is that you got sleep but you didn't get rest. Your mind has been in turmoil all night long. You've been wrestling in your sleep. Have you ever woke up and your bed was wet? The bed is all torn just like you've been in a fight because your mind has not rested. Your body went to sleep, but your mind is still caught up in a warfare. Your mind is the battleground. Touch somebody and tell them the enemy is after your mind. Out to worry you to death. Out to stress you to death. Out to break you down. Out to make you quit. Out to make you think that you can't get up. Out to make you give up on your dream. The warfare is in your mind. It's not in your checkbook. It's not in your savings account. It's not on your job. The fight that you've got to fight is in your mind. And if you whip it in your head, you can whip it in your checkbook. You can whip it on your job. You can whip it out of your children. But you gotta cry out of your head. Why are you the way you are? And what more would you want to add to your life? What would you like to take out of your life? In a meeting like this, there are things you'd like to add to your life. There are things you'd like to take out of your life. It's great that you know it's possible in the first place. Your life, how you live, what you do, the character of your words, the totality of your personality, the expression of your mind. 
So managing your mind is the primary principle for increasing your value and multiplying your success and upgrading your state. Sometimes you say, I've tried hard about this, I've prayed about this, I've done this and I've done that and I've done that and I haven't had much success with it. What more can I do? Well, I'm saying to you, let's begin with mind management. Can we manage your mind? Can we get into your mind and see how it works and see what files need to be deleted and what files need to be downloaded and installed? So what changes can we make in the structure of your thinking? Let's go to John chapter 10 and verse 10. I am not talking to you about how you are going to make prosperity happen. I am talking to you about the prosperity that God has already made available. He's already made your healing available. He's already made your deliverance available 2,000 years ago. He's already made your money available, your increase available, and everything you need for this life has already been made available. The Bible says the heavens belong to God and the earth he has given to the children of men. Now that's how you got to start thinking. Anytime you bump into something where you're not being successful, your marriage, raising your children, your health, you have to remind yourself, God wants me to be successful in every way. When you see killing, stealing, and destroying, do not give God credit for that. The Bible is very clear that Satan comes to do what? Kill, steal, and destroy. Do you have the courage to think something beyond where you are? Do you have the courage. God says to Abraham, look out from where you are. He says, oh man, do you have the courage to think beyond the parameters of your present location? He said, look out. What do you see? I see the stars of heaven. Look out. What do you see? The sands of the earth. He said, what you see is what you'll be. So shall thy seed be. Your children will be what you see. If you see nothing, they will be nothing. If you see something, they will be. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. It says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Then he goes in verse 8, Finally, brethren, this is not an addendum. He's going to tell us something that's so important in connection with all he's been talking about. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. Says if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Don't be in bondage to your thoughts. Thoughts are coming to you that are wrong. Thoughts are coming to you that are trying to intimidate you, trying to make you feel less than yourself. You got to say no. Have thoughts of hope. You don't bother about what's happening around you. It doesn't matter who likes you and who doesn't like you. Are you listening to me? You see, at work or in business, never limit yourself. Tell somebody, say, I've been thinking. The, the enemy cannot use my car. He doesn't need my car. He don't need a house. Fooling with my job, he doesn't need a job. But life is after your mind. And, and what you've got to understand is that any way, any entrance way that he can get to upset your mind, he will begin to wear you out. That's why I would rather have peace than have joy. The Bible said in the word of God, God has promised I will keep him at perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. It is not God's will or purpose for you to be troubled in your mind, frustrated in your mind uncomfortable in your mind in fact the bible said be anxious for nothing to be anxious is to have anxiety about something that hadn't even happened yet some of you are so worried by the threat of trouble you're not in trouble it's just that trouble has threatened you 
and the threat of what might happen, what could happen, is wearing you down. Half of the things that you thought were going to happen never did happen. But if you allow those thoughts to dwell in your mind, it will succeed at robbing you of your peace, robbing you of your joy, robbing you of your life, just because you thought yourself into a nervous breakdown. You thought yourself into depression. You thought yourself into defeatism. Now, ladies and gentlemen, buckle your seat. I'm getting ready to go to some places where we need to go. Strongholds are houses of thoughts that reside in one's mind. Strongholds are made up of thoughts that reside in your mind. In your heart, you don't want to do this thing, but there's a stronghold. You ask, how come I keep doing this? You ever wonder about people, how come they can't let that go? There's a stronghold in their mind. Life is after your mind. You see, he didn't just tell us to renew our minds without telling us what to think about. He told us to change the fires in our mind. And then he told us what fires to download. So he told us what to think about. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good reports. How many things have you listened to and they were not of good report and you kept thinking about them? They were not true, they were not honest, they were not pure, they were not of good report. Yet, you centered your mind on them and you wonder why you're unhappy. An unhappy pastor produces unhappy people, unhappy congregation. I don't keep my mind on nasty things. I only think deeply on God's word. I don't have time to meditate on other things, especially all those things that don't qualify here. The struggle is in your mind. Strongholds may even become sexual things, addictive behaviors, substance abuse, anger, physical abuse. If you're ever going to deal with the addictive behavior, whatever it may be, it may not be pornography, it may not be drugs, it may be just used to acting in a hateful way. It may be the habit of murmuring, habit of complaining. It's all fortified in the mind. It's right there in the mind. How come you can't stop partying? Some of y'all say you still party. You call it going to the lounge now. Well, what's wrong with that? We got to have a good time. See, you're having a good time based on the old mindset. It's in the Bible. It's called reveling. Reveling is translated what? Wild parties. Wild parties where self is the center of the event. Your great great grandfather are hoping that you don't take the road they took. Are you still there? There's a greater life out there. Are you listening? There's a greater life. Don't be in the same bondage your great grandfather was in. Your roots should be in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away and all things are become. Now you look at your life and you think, well, you know, I'm not a very outgoing person. The way I was treated, I lived with my uncle. They so dealt with me and put fear in me. I grew up with fear. For how long are you going to think like this? What are you going to do about it? Is it time to change? You are here now. So what are you going to do? What's your future going to be like? For how long are you going to testify that they put fear in you? How long will you be in bondage to your mind? The bondage of the past. For how long will you be there? How long? Elijah the prophet said to the children of Israel, How long shall you halt between two opinions? In other words, the word halt means to stagger like a cripple. He said, How long shall you stagger between two opinions? How long? How long are you going to stagger in your life? When are you going to finally see yourself joining upward and forward only? I've told you, that's my life. Upward and forward only. I don't have no downs. Now, there are many people who have known me for years. There's been no down in my life. I can't have a down. I just keep moving upward. I believe Jesus gave us a life and he said, follow me. He said, he that follows me shall not walk in darkness. He shall have the light of life. That's progress. That's success. That's, success. That's prosperity. That's victory. Why does Pastor Chris tell people 
they can have a life without suffering. I didn't say that. Who said their own experiences told them? I didn't say that you may not have some things to suffer. The only thing you ought to suffer is persecution. That's what the Bible says. And I've got quite a lot of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to challenge you to waste no more effort wrestling with other people. Your destiny, your future is not predicated on the decision of someone else. You've wasted too much of your life trying to change other people's mind about you. It doesn't matter what they think about you. God is not going to bless you by their opinion. God is going to bless you by how you see yourself. That took me to the second part of the message in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13. Three great factors, three great principles, three great spiritual laws that are necessary for an exciting life. So he says, now abide it. Faith, hope, and love. These three. The greatest of these is love. It says love is the greatest, but the three are the three greats. With one being the greatest of the three. Faith, hope, love. These three. The old King James translation says charity instead of love. So it's love because it's translated from the Greek word agape. God's love. Even in the heat of trouble. He said when you go through the fire. You shall not be burnt. He said it. So why should we bother about the fire? He said, when you go through the fire, you shall not be burnt. So I know that I've got to go through the fire. And I don't have to try to, you know, well, you know, this part of my life, I know I'm going through fire now, you know, I'm going through fire. He didn't say that you will notice it. He didn't say that. He said, when you go through the fire, you shall not be burnt. Shadrach, Meshach, in Abednego went into the fire. The Bible says nothing was burnt except the bones with which they were tied. And that there was no smell of fire on their clothes. Then he said, when you go through the water, it shall not overflow you. So that's telling us about problems in life. In that when we go through them, we will not even notice them. Why? Because you stay. You stay on the platform of the word of God. Stay. Stay on the platform of the word of God. Listen, just the word alone will save your mind. The engrafted word of God will save your mind. The engrafted word of God will get in your memories. The engrafted word of God will heal things in you that you didn't even think could be healed. People have given up and said, well, there's no help for her. The engrafted word of God will get down in your spirit and it will change you. The engrafted word of God will give you new desires. When the Bible says that God will give you the desires of your heart, he's not saying he's Santa Claus and he's going to give you everything you want. He's saying that he's going to give you the things to want. He's going to give you new desires that you never had before. That's what I say I've been thinking. The Bible says the engrafted word is able to save your soul. When something is grafted, it becomes one with your tissues. When that word that is being preached in you becomes one with you and you cease to just quote it, but its thoughts become your thoughts. The engrafted word is able to save your mind, your memories, your emotions, your attitudes, your disposition, the word that sticks to you. Change your thoughts because your life what you are today is the expression of all your thoughts all these years. You look like your mind. Now, if you found out that your face is the expression of the character of your thoughts, how do you feel? And not only that, your life, the way you are, is the character of your mind. Plus that, the circumstances of your life are the expression of your mind. Why do some people always have accidents? By their confession, they have opened up their lives to demonic operations. And they don't know this. They have fear because they had an accident one time. In one year, only you, five 
near-death experiences how many more are you gonna have and keep testifying it was God that just saved my life when is your testimony going to go beyond that level as I was just going like this they just shot a bullet at you I did like this when will your life stop being constantly harassed must you always be at the wrong place every time you come that's when the trouble is just starting no there comes a time when you learn to say I told you there's trust and there's faith in trust we say it doesn't matter what happens in faith we say in my path there is no death touch somebody and say I believe I'm coming out I don't know how long it's going to take I don't know what I'm going to have to go through I don't know what I'm going to lose along the way but I still believe that I'm coming out I've been broke I've been busted and disgusted but I still believe that I'm coming out I'm locked up in prison they say I'll never get out but I still believe that I'm coming out I'm coming out I don't have nowhere to stay. I'm coming out if my husband married somebody else. I'm coming out if I don't have no job. See, because the word is my medication. It's my therapy. It's my analyst. It's my counselor. It's my rehabilitative drug. It's my sedative. It's my cigarette. It calms me down. It settles my nerves. It gets in my head. It's my compass. It's my roadmap. It's my computer. We can slack on the choir, but for God's sake, give me some word. Because I got to live by it. I got to move by it. I got to think by it. I got to move. Until you know that you are loved, you will never make a success of your life. You've got to know that you are loved. If a husband doesn't know that he is loved by his wife, the family will never work out well. If a wife doesn't know that she is loved by her husband, the family will be in shambles. Love is something you believe and speak. Children have to know that they are loved. And parents have to know that they are loved. Learn to speak the law of language. I'm an African man. I don't talk like that. We love, but we keep it in our hearts. No. Love has a language. Love must speak. If love doesn't speak, it dies. It dies. You know, people who can express love lavishly cannot believe in the lavish love of God. And the Bible says God has bestowed his love upon us, lavished his love upon us that we are called his sons. Become confident of it. It will change the way you live. Become confident of it. It will change your perception of your future. You cannot deliver greatness out while you breathe in weakness. What about hope? We talked about love. I said hopes are based on thoughts. What are hopes? Hopes are expectant thoughts of a desired end. Because you see, he says these three abide, faith, hope, and love. These three are powerful principles to live by. I got to trust in the love of God. I got to trust that God loves me and wants me. If he loves me, he must want me. If he wants me, he must have a plan for me. I come into this world fulfilling the plan of God for my life. Great confidence. I'm not living for nothing. If you don't know why you're alive, you're going to be dotting about, dotting in the darkness, not knowing where you're going. You do this and you do that. You get into this business and you run out of it. And do this and run out. You, you keep moving around. Whatever they say is working is what you get into. No, don't let your life be swayed by the circumstances of the season. Hope is based on thoughts. How can I be expectant? Because my thoughts are expectant. So hope depends on what I think about. What do I think about myself? What do I think about God? What do I think about my environment? Am I going to give up and say nothing works? I'm finished. Nothing works. Is that the way I'm going to think? Am I going to think like everybody around me is a thief? Nowhere is safe. Is that how you're going to think? There's more inside you than the world could ever fathom. No matter what happens, we can choose to win.